Hi everyone. Welcome to my garage. <laughs> uh, I'm working out here because I'm going to be spraying paint and the fumes are going to be too intense to work in the house. So I came out here, set up a little picnic uh, fold out table here and put a piece of pegboard on top and uh, I'm going to shoot a little paint. But first, before I get into the shooting of the paint, I want to talk to you about colors, uh, the color wheel, how to mix paint, and maybe mix up a some other weird color or something just to show you how it's done so i'm going to run the intro and as soon as that's done we'll get right into it be back in a minute actually fiberglassing painting as hard as a brick bat for a leading edge welcome to sig cougar build part eight the formers see uh, i know it's going to be a little out of turn there it is the 20 size version all right let's get started I want to focus your attention down to the table and I'm going to show you first off a color wheel I'm kind of playing this by ear so if I miss something let me know and I'll try to catch up on it later so uh, I'm going to readjust camera bring it down to the table here and show you what I can show you to start off let's look at the color wheel this is a color wheel uh, Purchase this at Hobby Lobby. You can probably get it at any good art store. And you can see what colors matches, like a pure red, and it shows the different shades and other colors that will kind of go with it. But you can buy these at uh, Arts and Crafts store. And what I want to get into now is how to use the color wheel without having the color wheel itself. What I did is I drew out a circle and I have up here red, yellow, blue. I'm going to put that color paint on here. Uh, before I get into this, I should explain the paint. The paint I use is an epoxy paint and the company I get it from is Class Coat. This is a part A epoxy and it's a three part system. You have part A, part B and a reducer to thin it down so you can spray it or you can brush it on it's up to you but using a spray gun it goes on thinner and it coats so well that usually one coat takes care of it as far as your coverage goes this happens to be yellow it is number 160 this is the yellow I always buy uh, it is a, as close to a pure yellow as you can get it's not leaning towards the yellow side is not leaning towards the red side or the blue side it's not leaning towards the red side but it's almost a dead-on yellow okay the next thing you need besides your part a is the part b which is the catalyst this happens to be gloss catalyst number on this one's 405 and this is to paint anything that you want to be shiny a glossy coat on it or you can get a satin catalyst. I use a lot of this. It's, this one's almost empty. But uh, this is a Part B. It's a satin catalyst. Numbers 463, if you want to look that up. And then you need a reducer. This is a class coat reducer, specially made for this, for their paint. The number on it is 500. You can order this off their website, and it's right down here, www.classcoat, spells it with a K, K-L-A-S-S-K-O-T-E.com. And that's where I order all my paints from. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, let's go to the color wheel itself. I only use primary colors. I don't order... Uh, military colors even though you can class coat sells a bunch of military colors uh, American Japanese German I think in some Italian colors Navy uh, colors Army colors Air Force colors they have it all broke down pretty much already pre-mixed but I don't do that I like mixing my own it gives me more control of what I'm doing let me get this centered in the frame here. I don't have a monitor anymore out here, so I gotta do this by ear. 
So let's start out with the three primary colors. You have blue, yellow, and where'd my red go? It's a, here somewhere, where's my red? And red, okay? And you can see that's red. And this red is not a pure red, and this blue is not a blue, pure blue. The blue that I have is a deep blue. It's one I use a lot, and the number on that's 310. But this is kind of leaning towards, I would have to say, the red side of blue. Because blue dead center, pure blue would be here, pure yellow, and pure red. The red is not a pure red. This red, I believe, leans a little bit to the yellow side. Because it's not, uh, it might, I don't know. It, it's just not quite dead center. It's a little, I don't know how to say it. Um, it's a little bit orangish to me, okay? But let's start with that. I'm gonna open it up and give you a little color test here to show you how this works. Okay, here's red. I'm gonna put some red right here. This is, let's say pure red. This is actually a little dark, so it might be leaning towards the blue side a little bit, regardless. And the blue, blue is a very potent color when it comes to uh, these epoxy paints. It takes a little bit and it goes a long, long ways. So be careful when you mix the blue. Okay, there's the blue. And we'll open up the yellow. And yellow. So if I had to put a label on it, um, let me show you what I mean. Let's say this is dead center red here off to the side. The red's not quite perfect, so it's off to the blue side. The blue is leaning towards, I would say the red a little bit, because it's a little on the dark side. So I'm gonna put the center line right here. And the yellow is almost a pure yellow, so it's down the center there. Just so you understand where I'm, where I'm coming from here. All right, there's, let's say these are all primary colors, perfect, uh, pure colors. Let's say if you mix a little blue with the red, everybody knows what you, what you get when you do that. You get a violet or purple, whichever you prefer. There's blue. I'll put some red in there. And get me a different stick. And we'll mix it up. Just so you can see that it turns to a purple. It's getting there. I can see purple coming out of it. It's just I got lots of blue. There we go. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe if I smear it a little bit, you can see. But there's purple. Halfway between blue and red, you get purple. Now for the yellow. We're heading towards the yellow side off of red. I should have started here, but sorry about that. There's the yellow. Mix in a little red. You guys know what you get when you mix yellow and red. You get orange. Okay. Let's mix that in. This is not a real good orange, but it's an orange. It's a little bit on the light side. Can you see that? It's not quite the dark red that you really want, but it's more of an orange, a little more yellow, just to push my point. Okay, didn't get enough on the stick. Okay, mix that in. Yeah. 
and that's pretty much an orange it might not show orange on the camera but by eye right here looking at it it is orange okay now let's move down to yellow going to the blue side and everybody knows that yellow and blue make green okay grab a different stick and there's your green color just like that okay pretty simple everybody knows their colors pretty much I'm, I'm sure I just wanted to demonstrate the point and uh, for in the center of this circle this is where your red your yellow and your blue come together and we all know what happens when you mix red yellow and blue you get this chocolatey colored brown there you go there it is there's the brown and that's how the colors work and you're mixing you're probably wondering uh, what about white and black that's a good question okay here we have gloss black number on this is number 70 this is class coat black and I got a big can of white okay now I can't see my framing so I'm gonna do this again black and white black and white are not colors per se they're more like tones it, you can take any of these colors and add black to the red and make it a dark red you can add white to the red and make it a, a light bright red same with the yellow the blue same thing you're not going to change the color you're going to change the intensity of the color uh, either lighter or darker like dimming the light switch okay that's what white and black does for you all right let me move some of this stuff and a color that you can't mix okay out of all the colors in the spectrum one color you cannot mix possibly two but I don't have the second one but the first one is aluminum or silver okay this is silver or aluminum number is 80 there's no way to mix this color so you have no choice but to buy it if you want a silver color all right another one would be gold or bronze that's a that's color another color it's awful hard to make a good uh, mix of colors to make it okay all right let's mix a color let me grab a mixing cup this is something that you will need in your endeavors of painting is a one ounce mixing cup okay I'm not gonna mix a whole ounce but I'm going to mix a little bit um, let's see olive drab is an easy color to do um, let's let's try that olive drab we'll start with a little blue okay and it's kind of a a sandy looking green so we're going to add a good helping of yellow all right mix this up and see where see where we're at that's about the right tone of green I'll, I'll put some on a paper here in a second 
but olive drab is a little bit brownish don't you think so I'm gonna add a little red just a drip maybe two no maybe one we'll do with one let's mix that in and we'll give it a little brownish tint to it there we go Olive drab is kind of a sandy greenish brown tone to it and I think I got a very close approximation without having a color chip and color chips are nice to have um, there used to be a book out there called M&M um, maybe and it and it had a bunch of military color chips in there in the and the scale guys would buy that book and they could match their colors to that to those chips and those chips are what they used for scale contests so when the judges judge your airplane on color they would use those color chips that you give them from that book to match the color on your airplane that you had to mix okay let me show you what i got here here's let's see if i can keep this centered in the frame and get some more That is a really good olive drab, in a matter of fact. I would spray that on my P40. Okay. I can't tell if that looks olive drab to you, but that looks really like olive drab to me. Okay. There it is. That's the color I mixed. Let me pull it down to the center of the frame. I think that's about that right there. Okay. That's mixing colors. And the only way to mix colors, you're afraid to do it, that's okay, but the only way to do it is to do it. Uh, just start dabbing colors down on a piece of paper like this and just mix up a couple of dots and you can take your measurements like that. One drip of this, one drip of that, and you add it up and then you say, okay, then it's one part red, one part yellow, one part blue, and it's not quite right, so you add another shot of blue or another shot of yellow and then you go, it's one to two to one and you can mix a larger volume that way just by measuring using the measuring cup and the different measurements on there all right let's see let me clear this off i'll be right back and i'm going to show you some of the equipment i use there's one thing a couple of things i forgot to mention you're going to need clear this is clear number is 40 they don't have a gloss or a semi-gloss clear. It is just clear. Uh, you add semi-gloss to it and it makes it a flat, kind of a, a semi-gloss flat if you rub it out enough. But if you need dead flat, you're gonna say, hey, I'm gonna paint like a P40 olive drab and it has to be flatter than flat. They do have an additive. It's kind of a powdery type substance. Kind of reminds me of micro balloons, but it's not micro balloons. Um, it says catalyst flattener additive and it gives you instructions on how to mix it in and when you're done I guarantee you that your paint will be flat absolutely dead flat okay let me put this off to the side ah. let's get started with the simple stuff paper towels You'll need paper towels. These are the Scott shop towels. Pretty heavy stuff. Um, much better than the white kitchen towels that you might be thinking of using. But that's that. Knife. Pencil. Extra blades, definitely extra blades. And you're wondering why, why you might need a knife. Well, one thing is, I don't have it on my table, but I should have is a roll of masking tape because when you tape off uh, your canopy or something like that you might need to do some trimming and that's what the knife is for you're, you will need slide this off jars to mix with I use baby food jars and this is a gravy jar um, my favorites are jelly jars like smuckers or something like that because they have indentations in the lid and they screw down tight. They're not relying on a, a rubber, as you can see in here, 
a rubber seal. This will eat, get eaten away by the thinner. So these will work in a pinch, but I recommend uh, like a Smucker's jar if you're gonna mix paint. But if you're, it's temporary and you're not gonna let it sit for very long, one of these jars will work just fine. All right. Acetone for cleanup. Always use acetone for cleanup. Um, it saves you on using your expensive epoxy reducer. Okay, well, before I get to that, ventilation's important. Always wear some protective gear. This is a 40 micron filter mask, dual cartridges. I picked this up at Home Depot. I can't remember how much it cost me. I've had it for a long time. And you can buy the filters. They just kind of snap on like that. But you can buy extra cartridges. Okay. And they're not usually this tough to put on. There we go. But always wear a mask. Well, have a well ventilated area. Uh, not much more I can tell you about that. Because it is kind of a toxic uh, chemical, really, if you get it in large concentrations. I wouldn't recommend spraying indoors. And if you do spray indoors, make sure you have a ventilator going, something that can get this stuff out of the air. Okay, we'll get that out of the way. One more thing. Rubber gloves. I buy these by the hundreds, I guess they are. These are five mil thick nitrile disposable gloves. They don't have any powder or nothing like that on them. And uh, they'll save your hands from getting all messy with paint and having to use harsh chemicals on your skin. Let's move on to spray guns. This is the type of spray gun I use right here. This one says K3 on it. I've had this for many, many years. I can't even remember where I got it from. This is what I like putting on my primer. It has a circular pattern to the spray. It doesn't have a fan on it. And I can get better into the, the 90 degree corners of, let's say the horizontal stabilizer or the wing, where the wing meets the fuselage. And I use this quite a bit. Another one I use is this purple job here. This is a Harbor Freight. I use this for applying the color and it has a fan nozzle. You can see that it has um, the little tabs on here to make a straight fan spray pattern. Great for covering in large quantities of a single color. And if you want to know the number on that, I happen to have the box here. Um, item numbers right here, 92126, 92126. And a third gun is this one here. This one is more of a touch-up gun. But it comes with these little one ounce hoppers. Uh, it has, I believe they're Teflon gaskets in there. They're not the rubber O-ring type. And you can spray harsher chemicals through it without having it destroy your gun. This one's from the Eastwood Company. Um, let's see. It says gravity feed trigger style airbrush gun. That's all it says. Numbers don't make much sense, but I've had this a long time. It works great for uh, doing small detail stuff, uh, painting chevrons or s painting the letters on the side of your model or things like that. That pretty much does it for the things that I use. Oh, no it doesn't. No it doesn't, my mistake. I use spot glazing putty. Spot glazing putty is something I use after I sand out the primer. I use 320 sandpaper on the primer. I've shown you that in previous videos. Uh, this is what I 
fill in the spots on the primer when uh, when you sand the whole thing you'll see some spots that you can't get and they're still shiny from the primer you fill those with spot glazing putty and it saves you from multiple layers of paint so you don't have a five or six layers of primer on top of your plane instead you just got one little shot of this acrylic uh, spot glazing putty this is Evercoat is what it's called but there's a bunch of them out there um, different types I use a lot of that that's why I got such a large tube of it uh, let's see what else I don't have the the sandpaper to show you but I do have steel wool once you sand it out you'll want to use steel wool on it and just polish the whole surface down with steel wool before you spray your color and that will take the roughness out of the, the sandpaper marks and smooth them completely out and uh, this is double lot double zero steel wool I also use triple zero if I need to get it a little bit more of a uh, smoother surface then I'll go with a, a finer grade but these you can get uh, the steel wool it, it, the package is really dirty but I'll read it to you uh, and the type of grades it comes in super fine is uh, zero 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 okay then it goes to zero 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 and this is double zero and then zero one two three and four those are the different coarseness of steel wool you can get that wraps it up that I believe is all I can say on this besides oh also scotch right pad I use that also along with steel wool it helps um, it might take uh, a few minutes off of your steel wooling because this is a bit coarser than steel wool knocks it down polishes it out okay that is it now that part's done let's mix up some primer all right there's the mixing cup I'm gonna pick this up and hold it so I can see what I'm doing and I'm gonna dump in oh about three quarters full of white that's about what I like just in boat in there now I'm gonna dump in a little black until it comes up to the line it should make it a light gray color and I'm not gonna mix it in the cup I'm gonna take it I'm gonna dump it in my jar just like that and just let it sit just like that and let it drip out for a little bit and when it's done dripping I'll be right back all right it's done dripping and I kind of cheated and used a stir stick and scraped it out because what I need to add now is my reducer so I have one ounce of color right this is part A we'll just call it part A and to make the right formula you have to have one part which would be one ounce of color one ounce of thinner and eventually one ounce of catalyst so I'm going to fill this right to the top with catalyst or I mean with thinner pardon me and that is all I need notice I did put on my my rubber gloves because this is really messy okay get rid of that put the cap on the reducer because it evaporates very quickly and it's fairly expensive all right I'll put the caps back on the paint in a moment now I'm going to take the cover the top for <laughs> it's a smucker's jar obviously but I'm going to mix that up and when I'm done mixing it up you'll see my primer gray there it is pretty good color I don't think that's too bad at all nice be a nice gray primer 
I might have to mix some more. I'm not sure. I, I think it'll go and cover the whole the whole model. That is all I have on this particular subject. Uh, next is going to be adding the catalyst, which would be it doesn't matter if it's satin or or gloss, but there's a satin. I'm going to be adding that next. And I'm going to uh, spray the airplane. But this is all I have time to do today. So by the time you see the next step, it's going to be another day. I just want to give you a heads up that this is going to be sprawled over a couple days. Because really, uh, a couple days ago, it was 90 degrees out. And uh, now, today, it's only 67 degrees, so it feels like it's freezing. <laughs> but it's warm enough to do what I'm doing now. So tomorrow's going to be a nicer day, and tomorrow I'm going to try to shoot a little color onto this uh, cougar. All right, I'm back. What I need to do before I can even spray this, okay, this is the primer I mixed up. Shake it up really well. It's that nice gray color. Yeah, probably needs a little more shaking, but I'll do that in a moment. I need to add the catalyst. I'm going to put satin catalyst in it. So I'm going to open up the can. Give me a moment, um, and I'll mix this up so you can you can see how how that's done. It's no different than anything else, but I just wanted to make sure that you've seen pretty much every step there is to see on doing this paint. When you get the class coat paint and you open up the lid, you'll notice that it has a inner seal on it. So what I do is I'll take and grab it with a pair of side cutters, open it up, and you see the color is a very sludgy looking grayish color. And it is sludgy. Let me uh, show you. See there's clumps in the bottom. You gotta mix all that in before you can start and this is going to take me a minute or two because you got to chop it up, mix it up, stir it up until it all mixes in thoroughly. So give me a few minutes and I'll be right back and this will be ready to go. Well, I've been mixing this for about five minutes and it's, it's pretty good now. Let me get this stir stick cleaned off. And I'll set this off to the side. Okay, you remember this is one to one to one. So I've already have one ounce of color in here, which is part A. I have one ounce of thinner in here already. And the last part of the one to one to one is one ounce of satin catalyst. There it is. Now I'm just going to let that drip out for a little bit and when it's done then I'll shake it all up. It'd probably go faster if I did one of these little numbers here. Waste not, want not kind of thing as my father would say. And besides this stuff, you don't want to waste it because it does cost you a little money. So and I'm a bargain basement type of modeler. <laughs> I'm a cheap, the cheap modeler. So yeah, I, I make sure that everything is used up. And what I like to do is I like putting this inner lid back on, on it. Okay, this little metal cover I took off. I always put that back on. Might not be necessary, but I find the shelf life is a little longer if I do. Okay. I usually wipe the lid off too when I get done, but since I'm in a hurry to get this section of the video done, I will do it later. Now that it's all in there, and you just shake it up. 
make sure it's well mixed. That should be good enough. And now you have to let it sit for uh, about 40 minutes. And the reason for that is for the chemicals to start bonding together. And once that's done, we can spray it. Okay, so I'm gonna knock off right here, and let it sit, in about 40 minutes I'll come back and I guess we'll start shooting paint. Well it's going to be a little bit noisy. I got to ha have to get the garage door open. You hear cars going by and things. Um, air compressor has a leak so it's hissing and the compressor likes to run non-stop when it's doing this so it's going to be noisy. But you can see I already started laying it down. Um, got just about 10 inches sprayed on it. So I'm going to show you pretty much the bottom wing, uh, the bottom of the fuselage, and I'll flip it over and uh, keep going. So uh, here we go. Well, there it is it's all primed just a matter of uh, letting it dry and then sanding pretty much all of the primer off and wherever there is dark primer that'll tell me well where the primer is laying after I sand it all down that's the parts where I'm gonna have to end up filling which is probably gonna be a lot of spots because I can see a lot of bad spots on this plane I mean a lot of them so I'll have to get on with my spot glazing putty after I sand it down. I gotta let it dry for 24 hours. So once it's dry, then I'll sand it, put on my spot glazing putty, sand it out, and then shoot it again with another coat of primer. And then that should do it. Um, then I'll sand that primer back down. Then it should be good to go. So what I need to do is clean off, clean out my air gun my sprayer and uh, call it a day so on the next video I believe we're gonna be shooting color so stay tuned for that keep watching for that one it won't be long and uh, have a good one <laughs>